good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new WWE Elite 2-in-1 review on the brand new Elite Series 82, Keith Lee and my boy Finn Balor. Woo! We, I know a lot of you clicked on this video just to see my reaction to this beautiful specimen of a Finn Balor figure, and I know a lot of you are going to want to take a look at this Keith Lee because it's our first Elite Keith Lee, and this updated Finn Balor looks amazing from the proto images. You guys know that we did a bunch of videos talking about these figures, and these are two of the figures that I was most excited for. I'm pretty sure Finn Balor came in at number one or two, and then Keith Lee was definitely in the top four, I'm pretty sure, on that video. And so today, we got two epic figures that we have been waiting on for a while now now and I cannot wait to get into them guys you guys can see the front viewing window here with Finn and Keith Lee if we spin it over to the side we do have an image of both men here both looking beautiful both beautiful men both beautiful specimens on the back we do get a little bio read if you'd like to read it you can pause it now nice images of the guys there I like that they did okay they did they use the same images they always use the same images I mean it's it's just it's kind of lame because when you spin it it's right beside each other so maybe if they flip this image over here and then put this image over here it wouldn't be as weird but who gives a damn so you get the same image there, and that's pretty much it. I'd like to see some updated packaging. You know, they usually go with the standard same packaging. I'd like to see them switch it up and give us like a black box or something. You guys remember like the first the first few Elite Series, the red and black boxes? I thought those were classic. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for our packaging, man. I cannot wait any freaking longer. Before I crack them out of the packaging, though, if you guys would like to grab these, go over to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS because I'm probably about to head over there and buy six more of these things. But anyways, guys. Guys, let's go ahead and crack Finn Balor and Keith Lee out of their packaging. So here is the Prince and Mr. Baskin, his glory themselves. And all I can say about these figures is these figures look pretty effing fantastic, if I say so myself, Brad. But that's not enough, you know? We can't just look at the figures and say, oh yeah, that's the bomb diddly did did diddly 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 dot com, Brad. We gotta dive into these hoes and find out exactly what makes them so great. Find out about them. What's their articulation like? What's changed from the past? How good are these things? We're gonna find out here together. So with that being said, guys, we're gonna dive into Keith Lee's accessories, then Keith Lee and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Balor's accessories and Finn Balor. And man, I am definitely ready. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into Keith Lee's accessories. So for Keith Lee's accessories, guys, he does come with two pairs of interchangeable hands as well as his entrance hoodie. And his entrance hoodie is actually in a molded rubber material, which is kind of unfortunate. On the front, you have the Keith Lee logo with the hoodie. And on the back, it says Bask in My Glory in the light blue and silver. Really wish that the silver and pink figure would have been the regular version and then the black version would have been the Chase variant. I could have sworn that was the case. I could be wrong about that. Maybe I'm mistaken. I guess I am since here we are and everybody else I've seen has had the black version. But here we go. It does unbuckle in the front. And I am going to go ahead and put this on the figure so you guys know exactly what you're getting. So here's what the hoodie looks like on the figure. I will say that the top port is really hard to get on. Actually, the middle and bottom ports are also difficult to get on. But I could not get that top port on there. But it does look good on the figure, I will say. I do hate the rubber accessories that we get. You guys know that we always get the sleeveless tank tops. And they're really, really difficult to put on the figure. Very similar case here with this figure. It's just very hard to get on, um, at least to clasp it together. Getting it on the figure itself isn't a big deal, but trying to clasp it and get it to sit on the figure is actually pretty difficult. But you do have the entrance hoodie. So we're just going to take this off. You'll just slide his arms back like that and then just pull it off like so. And then for his interchangeable hands, you have mic holding hands, which look really good. And then his, his opposite interchangeable hands are his entrance thumb pointing hand. And then he does a, this is the same exact mold as the Cedric Alexander thumb mold that we got in the past. And then his left hand is a fist. Now, one thing I will say is since Keith Lee is so big, I wonder if we're going to complain about the hands being too small. I didn't notice it at first, but you guys know it's like Braun Strowman syndrome where the hands are super small compared to the rest of his body because I'm pretty sure Keith Lee's hands are bigger than the average man's hands. I mean, he's 6'2", 320. I'm pretty sure his hands would be bigger than, say, Finn Balor's or, you know, Seth Rollins or somebody like that. So that remains to be seen. I guess we'll see that when we take a closer look at Keith Lee himself. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at Keith Lee himself. So getting into Keith Lee himself, guys, you guys will see his Elite 80 to head sculpt here. And overall, I think it does definitely look like Keith Lee. I like the head sculpt. I feel like maybe his basic head sculpt was a little bit more likeness to Keith Lee, but I still like this head sculpt a lot. I'm actually noticing right now that his sideburns on his beard, like his beard doesn't connect all the way. I'm not sure exactly what that's about. I don't know if it just lost paint or something, but I feel like it would look a lot better if the facial hair was cleaned up a little bit. Maybe if it dropped a little bit lower and you didn't see so much of this under chin. I think that would make the figure look a lot better, so we'll probably end up doing that at some point. You guys can 
can kind of see the, the mustache is a little bit out of line, but not, not the biggest deal. I still think the head sculpt looks good. Now, I watched another guy's review. His name was Scoopman5000. Really good review, actually. But on his review of Keith Lee, his torso was super duper loose. Mine is not. Mine's actually super duper tight, so I didn't have any issues with that. It's actually a really good ab crunch, and it is, uh, I'm pretty sure this is a new mold. We've never seen this mold before, and if you guys are wondering about articulation, there is the ab crunch. I think it, it feels really, really good. His waist is tight as well. He's got the Braun Strowman arms, the shoulders, and, you know, the shoulders to torso to hand ratio. I think it looks all right, you know? Maybe the hands could be slightly larger if he wanted to make a perfect figure, but I don't think that the, the hands throw it off. I think it actually looks really, really good. On the arms, you do have black wrist tape. You got the black elbow pad actually painted on to not hinder articulation. Down into the crotch, I'm pretty sure this is a new crotch mold as well. Or not crotch mold, but the upper thigh mold. These thighs actually have, like, some trunks sculpted on there. And on the side, it does say, Bask in my glory. And on the back, it says Keith Lee. And on this side, it has his silhouette in silver. So that looks really, really good. One thing I will say is my left thigh. Look at my left thigh. The, le the upper left thigh is super duper loose. Maybe I can fix that. I mean, I don't think it's like ridiculously bad, but it's definitely noticeable. I like the skin tone we got going for Keith Lee. I think it looks pretty damn good. I think it's the perfect skin tone, to be honest with you. Going down into the knee pads, he does have the large knee pads. Not my favorite, so it is going to hinder the knee, but actually it bends quite well. It at least gets to 90 degrees when you're posing it with the big knee pads. I'll probably switch them out, though. Going down to the boots, he has solid black boots. My left ankle right here, look how loose the foot is. That's kind of unfortunate, so I'll have to fix that as well. Probably have to switch those out, but overall, dude, really, really impressed with this Keith Lee. I knew I would be. I mean, when you look at it, it's it's pretty much a perfect figure from head to toe. I don't think you could really find a lot of things wrong with it. I mean, my God, it, it is very, very nice. I'm super excited to have it in the collection, and I'm very overall impressed with Keith Lee, guys. But let's go ahead and get into some Keith Lee Elite figure comparisons. So for your Keith Lee Elite figure comparisons, guys, here's the new Elite 82 in the middle, and then, of course, on the left, you have my custom that I made out of a Rikishi that was pretty much uh, an overweight Keith Lee. It still looked good. The skin tones matched and everything. You guys can see they did switch up the skin tones there with the Keith Lee figure, and then you have Angelo Dawkins over here, and I still feel like they made this Angelo Dawkins way too John Brown big, man. He's just too big. His torso is way too big. He just looks a little bit off, but there is your comparison between those guys, and there's the custom right there. Very, very happy to replace this custom and actually get an official Keith Lee in the house, and that is going to be beautiful to pose around with, but not only did I want to compare those guys, but we also have Walter right here that I wanted to compare just to get a little height comparison. If you guys want to run that match up, there you go. There's a size comparison there, and then if you wanted to get a little step further, you can take a look at Braun Strowman, the Monster Among Men, up next to Keith Lee. And so this is what that would look like if you guys wanted a height comparison between the two. Braun towering over Keith Lee. I mean, Braun is a freak of nature, but Keith Lee looks good up to the Braun Strowman figure. But that pretty much does it for your Keith Lee figure comparisons, guys. So with that being said, let's dive into the Man Finn Balor's accessories. So for the Prince's accessories, guys, we do get a claw t-shirt right here. And on the front, it does have the new Balor logo or the, you know, the 2018-19 Balor logo with the X through it. You guys know that he started donning that when he went back to NXT to, you know, reclaim his throne. And this is a beautiful looking shirt. I will say that on these newer Mattel shirts, it's almost like the graphic is kind of like transparent or something over the shirt. So it doesn't, it's not as like bold as you would like to see, but it's still a nice shirt. You know, I'm not going to complain about any cloth accessories. I think it looks really, really good. I don't think I personally own this shirt. I do have a couple NXT like newer Finn Balor shirts, but I have the one that says FXXX on it. And it looks like it says, you know, the F word, but it's supposed to be for Finn. And I still like the shirt. I still think it looks good. It fits the figure well and everything like that. And then we have interchangeable hands. And these are actually really, really interesting. So you guys know they always give him choke slamming hands, right? They always give him the choke slamming hands for whatever reason. And so you guys know he does have his new hand tattoo right here. And I'll get as close as possible. One thing I am noticing is that it does cut off a little bit because the head of the tattoo right here, the little, the man looking up into space, his like head's cut off a little bit because it doesn't go into the joint there. And I think I just chipped some of the damn paint off flexing that joint. So, yeah. The joint there... Oh my god. I literally just chopped some of the paint off. So when you flex that, it is gonna lose the head of the little boy there. Damn. But you know what sucks is if you switch out his hands for mic holding hands, like in the same skin tone from like Daniel Bryan or something, you're gonna lose the tattoo, which is very unfortunate. So you either have to keep the choke slamming hands, or I guess you could like heat them up and mold them into mic holding hands, which is probably something I'll try and do. But it does suck that the tattoo does get cut off right there. Outside of that, you do have the entrance hands, you know, the, the throwing up hand. You guys know his entrance hands where he 
throws his hands up. There are those. Looks really good right there. Same head cut off of the boy. And then my favorite part of the John Brown figure has to be the shooter hands. Oh my god. This one kind of has like a Grinch thing going on. You guys can see his fingers a little bit warped right there. Actually very easy to fix. So if you wanted to fix that, all you have to do is heat it up with a hair dryer, get it in the position that you want it in, and then run it under cold water and it'll hold and it'll be fixed. So that works for any part on a Mattel. So you have the shooter hands so you guys know that when he's in the turnbuckle in the corner, he points right in the other corner, shotgun drop kick, coup de gras all over, or you guys know when he was in Bullet Club over in New Japan, you guys know that they put the shooter finger to the head. He does it in NXT as well, but the first thing I think of is New Japan. But damn, bro, this is so nice to have. I cannot wait to use these, bro. This is beautiful. I've been waiting on these, so that is absolutely beautiful. So you get your interchangeable hands, your cloth t-shirt, and that pretty much does it for Finn's accessories, guys. So with that being said, let's dive into Finn Balor himself. So getting into Finn Balor, guys, starting out with this head sculpt that I have been wanting to get my hands on for a very, very long time now. You guys will see here, they finally gave it to us. The tapered, like, faded in beard here with the thicker style. I've been waiting on a thicker beard Finn Balor head sculpt forever, like forever now. You guys will notice that his haircut is shorter. It's when he first came to NXT, so his bangs are a little bit shorter here, but they actually did fade the sides, which looks really, really nice. One thing that would probably make it look a little bit better is if you took it a step further and maybe even acetoned off the very bottom of it, but I I don't know. I probably won't even mess with that because you guys can see that his hairline's there. If that just went straight into skin tone or like faded into skin tone, it would look a little bit better, but my God in heaven, man, this head sculpt is absolutely beautiful. I think you could even add a little bit thickness here, like filling this in with a little bit darker around the edges and then bringing up the beard a little bit, maybe closer to the lips. I think that would make it look a little bit better as well, but as a standalone head sculpt, this thing is phenomenal. I'm super excited for it. It looks amazing. You you guys were wondering he is on a ripped up torso i know when we first got images we didn't see the torso and so there was a little bit of speculation but i think bill ended up showing the figure on his live stream when they were answering some questions and of course ripped up torso if this didn't have a ripped up torso i'd probably have to throw my head off i would probably turn my eyes into scrambled eggs so i am super excited with the way it turned out it, it looks amazing we've gotten this before he's not on ball joints if you guys were wondering it's just your standard finn balor figure as far as everything else is concerned from head to toe, but we do have some additions and some updates, which we're going to get into. And one thing that I did not mention about Keith Lee is his legs are also on ball joints as well. On the left arm, he does have his black sleeve. I don't know why they didn't just give him a standard black arm right here for the black sleeve like they've done in the past. There's the hand tattoo that we talked about. On the right arm, he does have his black bicep band, black wrist tape. He also has his tattoos right here. He has his wife's matching tattoo with like the longitude latitude code, and then we have the dinosaur forearm tattoo. It's like the little kid drawing or whatever that's supposed to be. He also has more than this, so he doesn't have all of his tattoos. He has like a couple more draw. I think he has like a cactus and then he has another one, but those are not featured here on the figure. He's actually, I think he also has a tattoo on the back of his other arm right here on his bicep. That's supposed to be like a mountain range or something in like red, but nonetheless, it's covered up by the sleeve. So I guess it doesn't matter. We'll have to wait until another figure comes out to get that if you want that. And another thing you could do to make an old school Finn Balor is you could remove the tattoos to make like a 2017 Finn Balor when he was on Monday Night Raw with the bicep band and the black wrist tape. Going down to the trunks, you do have this clean, very clean Balor logo with the X. I love to see that. I'm very happy that that's super clean. And on the front, this is something that I'm not too fond of. It seems like this logo is a little bit too small than the actual logo, and I think it's supposed to be tilted a little bit more straight than that. It's not a deal breaker or anything. It's just worth mentioning as far as accuracy. Solid black trunks going down to the legs. Standard black knee pad. Black lower legs, which is super huge. You have the solid black kick pads that you love to see. It's, I mean, that's what Finn Balor's been wearing in NXT. And then this little detail that I'm super appreciative of is they actually added like his Nike wrestling shoes. They have like this blue detail on the back at least when he first returned back to NXT. Of course it varies attire to attire but they added the blue streak in the back of the heels and that is that's huge. They did not have to include that detail but they decided to do so and it actually goes a really long way when looking at the figure that they included that detail but here's a shot of it from the full body and it looks really good man. I'm, I'm super impressed with it. It lived up to the expectations but let's get into some Finn Balor Elite figure comparisons. So for your Finn Balor Elite figure comparisons guys we have the Elite 8 82 here. We have the Elite 74. We have the Top Talents figure from 2018. And then we have my NXT Custom Finn Balor that was made by BEW. And you guys can see they're the exact same. Like, they're based clearly on the same moment around the time he came back to NXT. I do want to get a zoom-in shot here so you can see these comparisons on what is more accurate, I feel like, on BEW's figure. So starting out first, you guys can see what I'm talking about on the trunks. I feel like BEW's is more accurate. Again, it's not a huge deal, but it is some, something worth mentioning. And then on the back here, um, the logo is a little bit bigger over here than over here and I'm not 
sure. I'm pretty sure the logo should probably be the size of them in between. Maybe not this big, maybe not this small, maybe a little, maybe a little bit in between. BEW's tattoo is a little bit too large, I think, on the decal there. I think he did get that decal from Curbstone. I don't think he hand painted that, but I think this one on Mattel's, it does have a little bit of runniness too, which is unfortunate. Maybe, I hope not everyone's like that, but it doesn't even have the other tattoo there, but it does have the dinosaur tattoo. And then here is the lower legs and the kick pads and everything. And then you guys can see he does have the full sleeve here. And then here's the comparison in the head sculpts. Very, very clean stuff, man. Super excited and happy with the way this turned out. And I still love BEW's custom. Still gonna hold that near and dear to my heart because it's still a beautiful looking figure. But we're not done with comparisons because you guys can see here you have the updated like 2020 fin compared to our 2019 fin. Well, it's like a year apart pretty much. And I do want to see what this jacket from this Elite 74 does look like on the new Elite 82 Finn Balor. And I'm pretty sure his new jacket has like the X logo, but I think this jacket still fits on this figure, you know? Like, it does have a red decal or a red Balor Club decal, and I mean, this thing has red on the X's, so I think it totally works. But sticking the Elite 74 jacket onto the Elite 82 Finn Balor, and yeah, dude, if you if you were on the fence about buying this figure, I feel like this right here will sell it. I mean, that right there is gorgeous. That is absolutely perfection. That is beautiful. Jacket looks immaculate on the figure, and the prince is ready to go. One thing that he is missing, though, is he's missing the NXT Championship. So the NXT Champion's gotta have his title, and my god, that is immaculate, man. I am super happy with it. I think it lived up to all expectations. I can't wait to get more of this figure. I plan to track down 20 of them, do different fix-ups, use this head sculpt on older figures, get some hair molded on there, maybe even learn how to how to sculpt it myself so I don't have to get like 100 made by other people. Uh, you know, Finn Balor is looking damn good. And one last shot, we have the new Elite 82 Finn Balor up next to my custom Vindication Kitty Omega. And if you know, you know, Brad. You know, you know. But anyways, guys, I think that is pretty much gonna do it for the 2-in-1 Elite Series 82 review on Finn Balor and Keith Lee. Overall thoughts on both is uh, worth every penny. Both of them are worth every single penny. You wanna update your Finn Balor. If you're a big Finn Balor fan like me, I'm probably one of the biggest that, that anybody could know. And I am in love with the figure. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It is gonna be very high up on my figures of the year ranking. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Keith Lee as well, though. Keith, Keith Lee's definitely gonna be in that countdown as well. I think that both live up to the hype. I know we've a lot of people were waiting on these figures. They were really impressed with the head sculpts and the articulation and everything, the details of these figures, and I think they're no different. If you guys would like to grab either of them, go over to WrestlingFigures.com, Recycle Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Huge shout out to them for making this video possible. And yeah, man, I mean, this, this is just a really, really strong couple figures. I think this whole wave is pretty damn good, which we're gonna get into. But yeah, man, I have, I really don't have any complaints outside of a couple things here and there, which we did cover. But anyways, guys, I wanna get into our sh random shout-out for this video. If you guys did not know, if you leave a comment and leave a like, you get a random shout-out. I will possibly shout you out in a future video. So this shout-out goes to the SJ. It says, I was like, what the hell is going on in the beginning? Brad with laughing, crying emojis. He's referring to yesterday's fantasy booking video. If you guys missed that video, definitely go check out the beginning of it. But put a funny skit in there that you do not want to miss so definitely go check that out but a huge shout out to the SJ for that comment I really appreciate it bro I plan on doing more skits like that at the beginning of my videos too I, most of the time I'm trying to get videos up and stuff and you know I'll, I'll definitely work on that but anyways guys I appreciate you guys for checking out the review let me know your thoughts on both of these guys down below I am enthralled with them definitely damn good figures man but anyways thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys and I will see you guys in the next video Thank you.